Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'll show you how you can set up Gmail SMTP email server for your WordPress website. Previously, I have created a similar video on the same topic, but the process of Gmail SMTP server setup has changed a bit since then, and our several subscribers have requested a new video tutorial with an updated method of Gmail SMTP server setup. In this video, I will not only show you the detailed process of Gmail SMTP server creation and setup, but I will also show you how you can configure the Gmail SMTP server in your contact form 7. So, without further ado, let's begin. To set up Gmail SMTP server in your WordPress contact form, you will be required to install only two plugins, the first and foremost, the contact form 7 plugin with a functional contact form 7 design and the second and most important, WP Mail SMTP by WP Forms. By the way, if you don't know how to create a beautiful and responsive contact form design, then don't worry, you can easily create one after watching the end screen video. Here I am assuming that you have already installed and activated contact form 7 on your WordPress website, so I will only show the process of WP Mail SMTP plugin installation. To install the WP Mail SMTP plugin, first, go to the WordPress dashboard, then hover over the plugins tab, and then click on Add New. Now just type WP Mail SMTP in the plugins search field. Here you will get a plugin with the same name by WP Forms, simply install and activate this plugin. Once you will install the required plugin, then hover over the WP Mail SMTP tab, then click on the Settings option. Now here under the General tab, you will get numerous fields. Let me quickly explain the important fields one by one. In this field, enter the same Gmail email address from which you want to send emails to your website's visitors. Also, make sure to configure the Gmail SMTP server with the same email account. By the way, currently, this field is disabled by default, However, once you will connect your site to the Gmail API in later steps, then a list of email dropdown will appear. Now here if you will enable this checkbox, then all the emails sent from your website will be sent from this email address only, regardless of other plugin settings. If you want to use multiple Gmail addresses as the from email address on your WordPress site, make sure to leave the force from email box unchecked. With the help of this field, you can set the from name. This is the name associated with the email sent by your website. By default, it will be set to your site's name, but you can change it to whatever you want. You can also enable the force from name option to apply this setting to the entire site. This is where you can choose which mailer you did like your site to use. Select the Google slash Gmail option. Once you have chosen this mailer, you should see a new section appear titled Google slash Gmail. In this section, there are settings labeled Client ID and Client Secret. To get the Client ID and Client Secret, you'll need to use your Google account to create a web application. This process doesn't require any coding, and I'll walk you through it in the next step. We will be coming back to WP Mail SMTP settings page a little later, so for the next step, open a new incognito or private window in your browser. Now go to the Google Cloud Console, the link given in the description. If you will log in for the first time, then this page will appear. On this page, check this Terms and Services Agreement, and select your country from the drop-down list. Now, click on Agree and Continue. If you have previously logged into the Google Cloud Console, you will likely bypass the Terms of Service. Now here, you will need to create a new project for your Gmail SMTP server. To do so, click on the Projects drop-down in the toolbar at the top of your dashboard. In the pop-up that appears, click on New Project in the top right corner. Now here you can enter a new name or stick with the default one. And then click on the Create button. 
Next, you need to enable the Gmail API for your project. To do so, click the hamburger menu on the top left corner of the Cloud Console dashboard, and then expand the collapsible menu if it is not already expanded. Now hover over the API and Services option, and then click on the Library. Now, in this search field, type Gmail API. Here you will get the results of Gmail API, click on the same. Simply click this button to enable the Gmail API for your SMTP server. After you enable the Gmail API, you should be redirected to the Gmail API overview page. Here, click on the Create Credentials button. On the next page, Google will ask a few questions to determine the credentials type you need. From the Select an API drop-down, choose Gmail API. Now here, if you don't see an option for the Gmail API in the drop-down, make sure your account has the Gmail API enabled. Next, under what data will you be accessing, select the user data option, and then click on the next button to proceed. Now, enter your Gmail SMTP app name. Select user support email from the drop-down list. And upload a logo for your app if you want, but this is completely optional. Finally, enter your email address in the email addresses field, then click on the Save and Continue button to proceed to the next step. This is an optional step that we will be skipping for this tutorial. Scroll down to the end of the Scopes section, and click on the Save and Continue button to proceed. Next, you'll need to fill out some information about your Auth Client ID. From the Application Type drop-down, select the Web Application option. Once you do so, more fields will automatically populate. You can leave the name field as the default value or change it to something more relevant. For this example, we will keep the default name that is Web Client 1. Next, skip the Authorized JavaScript Origins section and scroll to Authorized Redirect URIs. Now click on the Add URI button and input the same link as mine. By the way, you can copy this link from the WP Mail SMTP setting page or you can also copy the same link from the video description. Finally, click on the Create button. Once your app has been created, then your credentials section will expand to show you your client ID. There's no need to copy it now because you'll access it from another location later. Instead, go ahead and click the Done button at the bottom of the page. Google may put your app into internal mode by default. It's really important that you switch it to external mode and publish it, otherwise, your Gmail SMTP server will be super limited and would not function properly. In your Google Cloud Console sidebar, hover over the APIs and Services option, then click on the Auth Consent screen. In this example, our Gmail SMTP app is already set to external mode, but our Gmail SMTP app is currently in testing mode and we need to push it into production mode. To do so, click on this button. Once you will click on the same button, then a pop-up for the final confirmation will appear, simply click on the Confirm button. Next, click on Credentials in the left side menu. Once you're on the Credentials page, you can see the details of the web application you just created in the Auth 2.0 Client ID section. Click the pencil icon to see the client ID and client secret. Once you will click on the pencil icon, then this page will open. Here on the right side, our Gmail SMTP server's client ID and the client secret have appeared. Simply copy the client ID and client secret from here separately. Here, be very careful not to copy any extra text or spaces with your client ID or client secret, as this will result in an error in the next step. Now, go back to the WP Mail SMTP setting page. Now scroll down to the bottom of the general settings and simply paste the client ID and client secret into their respective fields one by one. Once you have added the client ID and the client secret values, 
Click the Save Settings button at the bottom of the page. After saving your settings, the page will refresh. You must grant permission before Google allows the WP Mail SMTP plugin to use your Gmail API to send emails. To do this, scroll to the bottom of the WP Mail SMTP settings page and click the button labeled Allow Plugin to send emails using your Google account. Once you will click on the same button, then the Google login page will appear. Go ahead and log into the account using the same email account in which you have created the Gmail SMTP server. If you are connecting with a free Gmail account, you might see this warning screen. Go ahead and click on the advanced link in the bottom left corner. In the expanded section, click on go to wpmailsmtp.com link. Don't worry Google only displays this warning because it has not verified your app. There is no need to verify it since you have created this app just for your own use. Now on this screen, finally, click on the continue button. Next, you'll be returned to your WP Mail SMTP settings and a success message will be displayed. Once the connection is established, you're ready to send a test email. To do so, simply click on the email test tab then enter an email address to which you have access to the inbox. In the end, click the send email button. Once you will click on the same button, then the success message will be displayed like this, and you should also soon receive the test email at the email address you entered. We have successfully created and configured a Gmail SMTP server for our WordPress site. Let's see how you can configure the same Gmail SMTP in our contact form 7. To do so, hover over the contact tab, then click on the contact forms option. Now click the edit link to edit the form in which you want to set up Gmail SMTP. Next, click on the mail tab. Now here, in order to send the email using your Gmail SMTP app, you need to change the email address of this field. Make sure to enter the same email account in which you have created the Gmail SMTP app. Here I'm not explaining the remaining fields, because I don't want to make this video too lengthy. By the way, if you want to understand all of the fields in this tab, you can watch my previous video on the same topic, in which I have explained everything. Finally, save the changes. Guys, I just want to let you know that it took me almost 10 hours to make this video for you, so please like and subscribe, it will only take you 2 seconds. And if you are facing any issues, please let me know in the comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time.